So I'm Martin Palethorpe. I um, am 46 years old and as Andy said I've been doing this for, for 15 years, doing various things around development in organisations for 15 years. So working with leaders, working with executive teams, consulting on culture, helping people look at how they're leading organisations and, and how that's working and, and, and sometimes how it's not. And the one thing that always amazes me is that, the, is that, for me, the number one thing that makes the most difference to anyone's individual performance is their effectiveness with their mind. Their effectiveness with, with their mind in any moment. Let me just um, show you a chart. So if you just uh, have, a, have a look at this and see if this rings true for you, is that, you know, We've got, uh, at, the, at the top here, we've got uh, behaviours, your behaviours, people around you, the behaviours that you're exhibiting in any moment produce the output that you, that you have for yourself and that you create for yourself. And underneath that, sort of underneath the surface there, is the skills and the knowledge you've got and the experience that you've built up over time. So those are sort of underneath the surface. We don't see them so specifically, but they're there and they influence your behaviours and the output that you create. And then underneath that, there's, there's beliefs, your beliefs, your values, your attitude and your personality. Does that all make sense? So what people do over, over years, um, well, we go to schools to start off with, don't we? We go to school and we learn we learn how to add up, how to, we learn the history of England or, or whatever else, you know. We learn all these specific subjects. A lot of knowledge and some skill. And then we go into the, the corporate world and we, we sort of do a variety of different things in these areas. So uh, we might develop certain behavioural skills. We might go on a management training or leadership development to, to develop specific um, ability and behaviours around, around that. At these sort of levels, we might develop skills. So we might go on a digital course or a finance course to develop some specific knowledge in an area and a skill, perhaps maybe go on a negotiation course or, or again, uh, any sort of course like that, some sort of skills training. And over the years, we, we pick up some experience of what sort of works for us and what doesn't. Then at this sort of level, there's all sorts of things that people have acknowledged that the mind has a, has a big impact um, for years. So there's all sorts of things... Um, that people are doing um, around developing their beliefs, looking at their values. There's NLP, there's mindfulness, there's meditation, uh, there's positive thinking that sort of came out in the 70s and the 80s. And these are all sort of methods to help us look at how we might develop. And then personality styles, we find out that we're a RED or, a, or an ENTJ or a you know, Myers-Briggs or Insights or all of these different flavours of um, profiling that you may have come across. So what, the question is, what, what impact does that all have? Well, sure, so my experience, it has some impact and it might have a big impact it, um, and it might have a small impact. But it, it, it's never sort of like 100% impact. Very often, it's a sort of slight shift that people get from this sort of thing. And so what I'm pointing to is that there is a, there's a foundation stone underneath here that we're going to spend today on. And that is the human mind. So the human mind. So understanding the human mind, that means understanding how thought works, how feelings work, how our experience as a human being works. Because actually that, that then shapes everything. So I, I can put someone on a course on how to develop um, behaviours, but if they're getting themselves in a pickle with lack of confidence or, or something deep-rooted down here, it has a massive impact on the stickability of any training above. So I'm pointing to this here, and, and actually really what we're doing is we're coming here to focus on how do we understand the human mind? How do we understand what's actually going on in every moment? 
And I look at this and say, well, now I know what I know. I'm like, how come I didn't learn this at school? You know, I spent my time learning maths and, and history and doing sport, but, but how did I learn to deal with, how did I learn to deal with um, uh, be become creative? Or how did I learn to deal with lack of confidence in certain issues or stress or, or pressure? How did I learn to deal with that? Well, I sort of fumbled along on my own trying to work it out, looking at my parents who were never taught either, obviously, and, and, and other people around me and looking at how they're dealing with it. Well, they're sort of all struggling along as well. So this is the bit that we're going to spend today on because what I'm suggesting to you is if we can un better understand that, we unlock something inside us that enables us in the topic today to be way more creative and to create innovation for our organisations. The, the thing that I'm going to focus on today, this is not going to be uh, what you might have experienced uh, normally, uh, usually, should I say. So this is not uh, going to be imparting knowledge for you to write down and then take home as a list and say, well, I need to do these four things and then, I, and then I've got the purpose of the masterclass. Because that's what we normally do, right? We go, to, we go to school or we go to university or we go on a course and the, the lecturer at the front says, well, this is, this is the method of how to do things. And, and you write it down and then you go away and you... Well, actually, the statistics say 12% of it will stick. 12% of it in some way might stick and it, it will typically be a how-to. So I might start doing this instead of how I used to do it and it's a, sort of a how-to. What I'm looking for to distinguish here is the difference between learning versus a realisation. Does anyone know what I mean by a realisation? So it's a realisation, it's a ah, ah, right? You see, you can go on a course to stop smoking or you can, um, or you can read loads of information about smoking and, and the, the, why you shouldn't smoke. But do you know anyone that smokes, uh, uh, that, that knows all of that, that still smokes, right? Well, they do that because they haven't had it, they've learned, they know, they know stuff as to why they might, shouldn't be doing it, but actually until they get a realisation for themselves, then they're not going to change. Does that make sense? My 14-year-old daughter, she's 14 and she's growing up and she's becoming independent and I can spot something, you know, being a bit older and, and having lived a bit more that is going to cause her a problem later on. I'll use the example, she, she slouches at the dinner table like a lot, you know, and she, I can see being someone that goes to the osteopath and has some problems with my back, I can see that it's going to cause her problems in, you know, at some point. But until she gets the realisation for herself, she ain't going to change that, right? And it's the same really on, on something like this. Anything you write down is only of value if you get a realisation. Yeah? Now, and, and, and we would say um, that actually you don't need to write a realisation down. Why not? It's something just shifts, right? Something just shifts. Um, uh, I, um, I've, I've stopped drinking as much coffee as I was. 2016, I, I don't know how this occurred, but all of us, I used to be in this thinking that I'd have, you know, at least two coffees a day, strong ones from a Starbucks or a Pret-a-Manger, and something shifted over Christmas, and all of a sudden, I, I don't need them anymore. Something shifted. Now, I don't have to write down you know, remember not to drink coffee today, it's sort of, it's sort of just gone, yeah? So my, my objective this morning is to help you have some realisations for yourself. Yeah? And this really is a, a, only of any powerful value if and when you realise something for yourself. Any questions on any of that? There's a, there's a great quote that I came across as I was um, doing a little bit of um, 
work on this. And, and the quote is, education is not learning knowledge. Education is not learning knowledge. It's training the mind to think. And that's what I am you know, attempting to do today, is to train your mind to think and to train your mind to unlock some realisations and some insights that you might not have had when you first came in here this morning. The other thing I'd just like to touch on is, um, is listening. And we'll, we'll do a little bit of work on this, a uh, little exercise on this later. Um, but I Im invite you to to listen with openness. And um, we'll explore again a little bit more about that later, but openness is I invite you to put away anything you already know, yeah? Anything you've read on the topic of innovation or the mind, invite you, because it will come up for you at times, but I invite you just to sort of leave it behind and explore this um, and listen not through your intellect, which is how we normally sort of process things. Hmm, what does he mean here? I don't, you know, what are, you're com coming from intellect or, yeah, but how does this relate to that and so on and so on. I ma it sort of invite you to listen through your entire human system and just sort of soak up whatever you get from what we cover. And the other thing to say about what, what we're doing today is a, a lot of what I'm going to talk about is profound, um, but it's common sense, right? It's, we're not doing rocket science this morning. We're doing common sense. But the problem with common sense in the society, in the spe speed of the society that we live in, common sense ain't so common anymore. Um, but, um, and, and so again, some of the, the concepts I'm going to talk to you about are, are quite simple, but it's to what degree you sort of get it and realise it for yourself will be the impact that it has for you, or, or not. What I'd like to do to start off with is I'd like um, you to, uh, is there some paper around, Tom? Wonderful. I'm going to give you five minutes. Um, and I'd like you to, um, to draw the person next to you. Okay? <laughs> Starting now. <laughs> so, what did you notice going on? What did you notice in the room? What did you notice going on in your, your own head? Embarrassment. Embarrassment. Lots of giggling. Lots of yeah? What, what's, this, what's behind the sort of giggling? Nervous. This nervous sort of like... <laughs> yeah. Want to get it right? Okay. Now, have you ever seen a four-year-old draw a picture of someone? Yes. Right? Because what do they do? They just get on with it, right? And concentrate. And there's no, there's no chatter of, oh my God, I'm going to look stupid or I can't draw or what if they don't like this? There's, there's, there, and all of a sudden, there's this, there's this voice in the head that's making all this noise uh, that they don't seem to have, right? And they just get on and they do it. That's a lot of things that I'm, I'm going to be pointing today is actually we, we've got this natural ability inside us to do things, to create got this natural ability but what gets in the way often is our thinking. Before we go any further I just would like to um, just align on um, to the definition of two words. So the word creativity and the word innovation. Let me give you a definition um, that I came across that I quite liked. So a human a human's capacity to develop ideas to solve problems and exploit opportunities. Well, that, you know, there's a businessy element to that, perhaps you could say, but it's, you know, it's a human's capacity to develop ideas. Yeah? And this is what we're pointing to is your natural capacity to develop ideas. 
how I define it, and, and it, this I think I got from a dictionary somewhere, was um, the application of creativity. So creativity is, is our capacity to develop ideas. And innovation is the application of that creativity to give rise to something new, to a product or a process or a service or something. So we use our creativity, we apply it, and we get something, and that something then delivers something that is new or better. Does that make sense? Does, to, so, you know, you may apply your creativity, your, your team may apply creativity to come up with ideas, and then it's the process of applying that creativity to actually create something, pr produce something. So the next exercise, um, in pairs, I invite you to reflect on creativity. Have I put this up somewhere? Yes, I have. And the question is, when are you most creative? When are you most creative? And the second, the, the second element is, where does it come from? There's one word I'm looking for specifically in this. It comes from thought, right? It comes from our thought. And, and sometimes, somehow, in the shower, that thought pops in, in a new way, and, and it, it's creativity, it's, it's this word realisation, and you go, bing. And that, that's a lot of what we're going to be exploring today, is how do you, how do you have that creativity? How do, you, how do you have that thought more often? I'm going to talk about um, what I call some principles of the human mind. Um, this, there's, there's a lot of work in this field um, going on. Um, what I'm talking about really comes from a guy who sort of had these realizations about the human mind back in the 70s, a guy called Sidney Banks. Um, and since he had those realizations over in the US, he's a Scottish guy, had these realizations, went out and started talking to people about it and started to get a, a, a number of people following and exploring. And actually, there's, there's quite a lot of work being done in this area. Um, it, the work's being done in business. It, there's a load of work being done in mental health with it and education and prisons and so on. The application of it is vast because actually so many of the issues that we've got going on as humans and indeed in organisations, there's a psychological element to it. Yeah? So, you know, things I might be suffering with, I might be struggling with confidence or with stress or with feeling pressure or I'm a bit defensive in certain situations or I'm worried about the redundancies that are coming up, I feel insecure about my job or I'm nervous when I make presentations or I've got issues with people in my team. Well, actually, all, many, many things like that underneath it, how, how we think is the sort of foundation stone. So I'm suggesting to you that these are principles uh, rather, than it, rather than being an idea or a theory. I'm going to suggest to you that, that gravity is a principle. It's like, it's like a fundamental truth that this is how it, something works. Gravity is not an idea. It's not something that works in some situations and not in others, certainly on the planet that we live on. Um, it, but it, it sort of works. It's not that I have to buy into gravity and say, yeah, do I like gravity or not? Or do I think it's a good idea? Let me see how I can apply it today. Um, it, just, it just sort of exists, right? So I know, you know, you know how to sit on something. You know how to go upstairs. You know, I know to put these on here and gravity will do what it does. Yeah? And gravity is working all the time. It doesn't, it doesn't only work sometimes, it works all the time. And it works when we're even not thinking about it, it's still working. What I'm going to point to you around the mind is that this is a set of principles. Now, 
that's my that's my own belief, and you need to realise that for yourself. You know, if 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 you do. This is the simple bit that we'll explore further. So what's going on is that you've got thought flowing through you. Psychologists um, say, and, and I've no idea how they work this out, but they say that we've got something like 60,000 thoughts we're having a day. Yeah? 60,000 thoughts every day coming through you. Some of those go into your consciousness, i.e. You, you are aware of them. Yes? And some of them, of course, aren't in your consciousness, but it's still thought. And the thoughts uh, create feelings in the moment that they occur inside you. So if you had a thought right now, oh my goodness, I don't know if I turned the fire off, you'd have a thought, right? Does that one resonate? Um, and then you have a feeling and you go, oh my God, and you feel anxious. Yes? You get an email and, you, you, you know, the project has finished on time. You get an email from someone to say that. You have a thought and immediately creates a feeling that, you know, great, I feel, I feel great. So what, what, what I'm suggesting is that, that, that all of this thought is coming through us and in the moment that it occurs, it creates the feeling. Some of the thought that we're aware of, but sometimes we have thought, that's creating a feeling that we're not aware of. And we have this feeling, actually we can't quite identify why we're feeling great or why we're feeling rubbish. But it's in the system somewhere. Now, um, th this, is, this is what I'm calling the human experience, right? So the thought's flowing through us and we're living in our thought in every moment. And it, it's just, just totally thought created. 60,000 flooding through us, occurring in every moment that we're alive, awake. Not even awake, right? Sleeping, have thoughts when we sleep. Yeah, vivid dreams, vivid dreams. Um, I, I wake up, you know, I've had, a, I've had a terrible dream, I've had a nightmare. Um, even when I'm asleep, my, th my thoughts are flowing and they can create a feeling inside me even though I'm not looking at the external world or, or anything's going on. Now, some other things to just point out on this is that there's, there's fresh thought coming in all the time. Yeah? There's fresh thought coming in. A realisation is an example of that, an insight, an epiphany moment. Oh my God, yeah. It could, it could be something I've thought about before, but I have freshing thinking because I think about it in a, in a new way. Fresh thought is, is flowing out all the time, in, in, in all the time, and actually it's also moving past all the time. So I might have some thoughts today that sort of change. They either disappear tomorrow or, or my thinking about something changes entirely. So have you ever had a an email that you, you get on a Friday night, it's five o'clock, you're just about to switch off for the weekend, it's a, it's a bad email, something, and, and um, it makes you angry. Now, you, you decide not to fire an email back, you decide to just let it lie, and over the weekend, you read the email on the Monday morning again, and your experience of the email changes ex it entirely, and you go, wow, that wasn't as bad as I thought. Does that make sense? Do you ever, ever do that? And so something's happened then over the weekend where the thinking that you had has, has changed and shifted, and, and that thought has moved on, and fresh thought has, has come in. One of the other elements to this, and we're going we're gonna to look at some implications of this diagram um, um, after the break. Here you are in the world operating and of course outside is, is the world. So the world's out here, the workplace, the, 
uh, everything. And we're looking at and things are occurring, like the weather. Um, like my work, like my boss, like um, the rugby, or, or whatever. And this is one of the big mis mis biggest misunderstandings that I'm going to point you to, is that we live in a world and a society where we think that this, we operate like this, is creating our feeling. So if it's raining, it's rained quite a lot at the moment, you know, we, we, we say, oh my, oh, it's raining, right? It's raining. Oh, the blooming rain, you know, I feel rubbish because it's raining. I can't go out um, because it's raining. Um, my work, I don't get a bonus, I feel rubbish. Um, the rugby, England lose at the rugby. Uh, uh, best we've got some Welsh people in here, haven't we? Yeah, yeah, and some Scottish and, you know, whatever, yeah. Yeah, well, exactly, yeah. So we win at rugby and we feel great, right? The whole nation of Wales feels great and the whole nation of England feels bad. But we op operate like this is actually having an impact in creating our feelings. Now what I'm suggesting to you to reflect on deeply, and you, you, might get this, you might get this logically quite quickly, you might get it deeply quite quickly, but what I'm going to suggest to you is that this actually doesn't create our feelings at all. How can, how can the weather out there impact the feelings in, inside you now? The only thing that creates your feeling is the thought that you have in any moment. We're going to spend a lot of time really looking at the imp some of the implications of this and the more we can understand our mind and how our thought works, the more creative we can be, the more innovation we can create. You know, you can say you don't have enough time I, I, I cannot even think about it. We could be doing the same job. I don't have enough time. Well, we all have the same amount of time, right? <laughs> yeah? 24 hours a day, that, that's, that's the amount of time that exists. And then there is our thinking about that. And the experience that that then creates for us. So one person lives in the experience that they create for themselves called, I just don't have enough time. There's never enough time. Now tell me the feeling that occurs when you exist in that thinking. Anxiety? Frustration? Yeah. Now, and of course it doesn't enable you to maximise your use of time, right? because that feeling doesn't allow you to be your natural, powerful state. And what, what, what I'm going to um, suggest to you um, is, um, I'm going to call it mind here. Uh, uh, don't worry about where this is all physically situated on this chart. It's, um, what we're talking about here, I, I find fascinating, but it's invisible, right? It's the other reason that you need to have these realizations for yourself. It, uh, is because it's an invisible topic that we all experience, but we is is hard to sort of write down in a book. Um, but the other element to this is is the mind and the power of the mind that people talk about. And um, what what with what what happens is the thought gets in the way, and so the thought I haven't got time leaves me with a feeling of anxiety or frustration that doesn't allow me to access the full power and resourcefulness of my mind. And what I'm pointing to here is to say that inside of us, we've got this natural ability to be amazing, effective, resourceful, uh, wise, uh, intuitive, creative, uh, and so on.
we've got this natural ability inside us, because we've got this thing going on, looking at this out here, it totally shuts down and impacts the level of power that we, that we are in any moment. So you know when you've been at your best, and I, I was kind of pointing this to this a little bit earlier with the creative, when are you at your most creative? The other way that I look at that is, uh, so uh, some, uh, there's, a, there's a psychologist uh, called Mikhail Cheek Sentmahail, I don't know if you've, you've come across him, um, uh, and his definition, is, he calls this in flow. And in flow, it's a bit like being in the zone. So this state, when, you, when you're on fire, you're alive, you're not thinking that much, you're not rationally thinking, intellectually thinking that much, you're in the zone, you're flowing, you're self-expressed, you seem to be sort of operating at your best without thinking about it. Time seems to go really quickly. Um, you don't have to worry about whether you're confident or not, or, or anything like that, you're just operating. Does it, do you relate to that? Sure, you've always all had those moments. If you just understand how the mind actually works more and more deeply, you can access that feeling without sitting cross-legged, closed eyes for 15 minutes every day. Not that I'm not that I'm demeaning that, but I'm saying that's a technique one level up on my triangle that I do earlier. So the in zone, the in zone thing. You know, I feel in the zone at the moment. I'm, you know, I'm not. Uh, I'm starting to think about coffee, but lo not a lot else, right? Uh, in zone is like golf, is any golfers here? The golfer needs to be in zone in that moment, because if you're in the zone, then the ball flies beautifully, you hit it. Um, if, if you're not in the zone, and you've got too much of this going on, this rational thought, guess what happens? It, you know, you try to hit it too hard, you know there's a, there's a lake there, and something changes inside you, and guess what? It fumbles along and goes about five meters. When you're presenting on something you're, you, know, you feel good about, you feel in the zone, when you're speaking on a topic that you haven't got a clue at, or you've got some chatter going on, then guess what? You look like an entirely different person. Okay. I'm just gonna then take you through four very specific things that we're now going to, to spend some time on, so, which I'm calling implications of the diagram that I've just drawn. So based upon the diagram that I've just drawn, those principles, the principles around how thought and consciousness and, and the mind work, we're going to spend some time looking at this, that thought creates our entire experience creates our entire experience of our life and our work. Thought is not true and it changes. Um, thought creates our feelings, nothing else does. And then we have a natural wisdom, creativity, natural ability inside of us. So what do we do if our, uh, our state, our feelings are going downwards? What I'm suggesting to you is, what we do is, uh, these are thought bubbles. We think, we think a lot. And we, put, we plaster thinking on top of thinking, and what does that do to our state? Right? What does that do to the feeling? Perpetuates the feeling. Makes it go on for longer and makes the feeling go on for longer. And how resourceful are you in that state? Well, not, not really. So what we as, as adults have done, um, uh, I was going to say brilliantly, um, but, but not really brilliantly, is we, we've, we've sort of learnt to, to, to make this carry on for a long time by thinking. What do kids do? So you look at a, look at a four-year-old, um, uh, bubbling along, self-expressed, you know, just, just 
going along with life, and all of a sudden something happens that makes them cry. They cry, they wail, they fight, they whatever, they go down. And then you say, oh, look at that doggy. And then they go, ha, 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 it's a doggy, ha, ha, ha. Right? And, they, and they, pop, they pop straight back up again to their natural state, to the natural state of just being in the world. But we go, ah, oh, see, I'm not creative. Damn, I'm not going to do that again, right? I'm not sticking my head above the parapet. That was stupid. Oh, my God, I feel such an idiot. Oh, 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 oh. Feeling, feeling, feeling. Yeah? Which could even stop us ever from getting up to the point that we naturally have anyway about something. So the point is that we've got... We've, these are my thought glasses, right? So can you imagine being um, born with, with these glasses on? It'd be kind of cool. Um, I think they're John Lennon fancy dress glasses, by the way. Um, but um, we're sort of born through the lenses of thought. And so everything we, we see in the world, the only way that we can make sense of and bring it, it, of anything is through our thinking. And these are flavoured, they could be dark coloured, they could be rose tinted, they could be, but they're coloured by my thought. In fact, my thought creates my experience of, of anything. And I, I don't realise that I've got them on, right? If I wear them long enough, i.e. like we've been wearing them all our lives, then, then I've forgotten the fact that it's just my thinking I'm living in the world like that's the way it is. The, the, rain is a, the rain is horrible. My boss is a pain, right? The culture of my company is rubbish. Um, and so on and so on. I'm not saying it's all negative, even on the positive side. You know, yes, I'm brilliant at this. Well, that's just a thought creation. Everything is, is thought created but we forget that it's created by thought. We live in the world that there is, it is that way. So Ian's over here, Ian's B and, I, and I'm A, right? And we're looking at the same thing. We're looking at the same tree, right? We're looking at a tree and then we talk about the tree, but we're not actually talking about the tree. He's talking about what he's created as his experience of the tree and I'm talking about my experience of the tree. And they're different. Is that, is that you with me? Yeah. Right. Now this is critical. What, what, what's, what's the implication of this? What, what, why is this so important? Not, not just everyone thinks differently, because we all know that logically. Yeah, well, everyone's got a different point of view. Everyone lives in an entirely different world, experience of the world. And so there, there is one imp implication of this is that when we're, when we're working with anyone, you know, client working with supplier, m one team member working with another, one division working with another, um, one country trying to get on with another country. This is how all the wars in the world are caused. Because we're not we, we see the world like this. I think that's my reality of it. So you come across with a different reality, and what do I do? I, 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 I don't get I don't get it. I, I might then lay a thinking on that about what type of person you are, what type of supplier they are, um, yeah, what's wrong with Israel, or you know this or that. I mean, goodness, there's lots and lots of implications of... Um, based upon the fact I live, not like this is my thought, but it's my, my entire experience that I'm creating. Another metaphor to talk about this is um, watching, watching a movie. So if you go to watch a movie, let's say you go to watch one of the Jurassic films, and you, um, you sit in the front row. So let's say I'm, I'm sat there with my, with my you know, little son. And at some point, you know, a, a dinosaur jumps out, right? 
dinosaur jumps out. And what do I do? I go, ah! Right? And, and, I, and I feel fear. And I, I have to sort of reassure my son and myself, I, I, don't worry, it's just a movie. It's just a movie. And then you relax again and the feeling goes away and you know, you're like, <laughs> it's just a movie and you reassure yourself if you need to. And I'm suggesting to you that life is like that. So um, there's a number of quotes on this from people like Einstein and Sidney Banks who I talked about earlier. They'll say life is an illusion. Life is a movie that you've created and you're having an experience through that movie. So when in your life, when uh, you create that to be a dinosaur, you create that to be scary, you create that to be um, bad or frustrating, you create it to be good, uh, you create it to be brilliant, you're creating it. You're the movie producer that's creating this movie that you then live within. Uh, and that, well, that moves on to my other question that, that sometimes people say is, well, yeah, okay, I get this, but how do I do something about it? How do you change the movie? Because the typical way people try and change the movie is positive thinking or reframing a situation or doing some mindfulness or something to sort of, yeah. But, but I, I'm going to suggest something slightly different. What's the implication of this for you and your own experience, though? Because that's even bigger, not just between people. What, what's the implication of, so what, for, for you as, a, as an individual? So where, where the, the, the most compelling so what that I, I'm looking for is, because uh, you may be living in an experience that doesn't get the best out of you in every situation. Because if you're living in an experience that's something stressful or you haven't got time or you're not creative or you haven't got the space or you don't have the knowledge, then guess what? You create an experience for yourself that totally limits you. Yeah? And so the more, the more I understand the nature of my thinking, the, less I can, the more I can let that go and actually just access my natural ability in, in any moment, whatever that is. I'm sort of linking in number one and number two here. Thought creates our entire experience. Thought is not true, and it changes. What do you see there? Sorry? Three skulls. Five faces. One face with two skulls? Okay. What is it actually? Sorry? A load of lines. A load of lines, a load of colour on a, on a piece of paper. Yeah? Apparently there's seven faces in there actually. I still haven't seen that myself yet. But, um, you know, we, we, th there's an example of the fact that we see different things. We see it in different ways. But the main, the main point here is, you're making that up. You've just made that up. There's no faces there. It's just a, it's just a piece of paper with some colour on it. Let me, uh, let me just do another one. How many triangles? I'll just hold it back here. Eight. Wow. Okay. All right. How many really? Right? Again, so constantly, the way we're sort of looking at something, our thought is, trying, is making meaning of things, and, and, and in the process of making meaning, we don't even realise we're making meaning of something, but we're creating this world that when we live within that, that can totally screw us you know, in, in certain situations, not having the time and so on. So the other, the other thing about thought is that it's not, it's not true and it's not right, but we live within it like it is true and right. Um, one, of, one of my experiences watching the um, Wimbledon last year was um, I was sat there with my wife and we were talking about Wimbledon and Serena was on television and um, I follow tennis and my wife doesn't really. 
And so I you know, watched quite a lot of it. I don't follow it intricately, but um, she turned to me and said, when's Venus on? And I'm like, don't be silly. You know, Venus, Venus is ill. For any of those that you follow the tennis, Venus has been off ill for at least a couple of years, if not longer. She's out the game. So we had a little debate about it. I, I was certain. Of course, who's on court the next day? Venus. Yeah? Oh, oh, yeah? How many times do you get stuck in your view of the world, your experience, like you know something? Uh, and, you know, and actually, how much of the time does that then thought create a world for you? You know something about yourself. I'll come back to the creativity again. You know something, you don't have time, or you don't have this, or you don't have that, that then shapes what you, what you actually get. I don't know if anyone's heard um, of the distinction of impersonal thinking versus personal thinking. Anyone familiar with that? Okay. So, it's all thought. Um... And we've got thought flowing through us. Personal thinking, so impersonal thinking is, is outside of us. It's, it's thought that is, is not personal. And personal thinking is, is personal. So what does that mean? So uh, an impersonal statement would be, it is raining. Personal thinking would be, oh God, it's raining. I hate the rain. It always rains in England. Um, and so on, and so on, and so on. By the way, I'm not saying personal thinking is wrong and bad and all of it, because we just do it. You know, it's, it's part of the human system. Um, but I, I'm, the, the more aware you, you are of this, the more you're able to access another, another level of thought. And, and in certain situations, instinct and wisdom c comes from here, generally. It doesn't come from this place where you might have noticed this index here of quality of mind. So what quality of mind am I coming from in the moment that I'm thinking or doing anything? The instinct I might have to come up with a new digital product could be impersonal thinking, which would be subjective, it would be an idea, right? This is, a, this is a deeper level of thinking that you access, you know, we talked about earlier in the zone, the idea that pops in when you're in the shower or out for a run or going for a walk. Um, that can be impersonal thinking. In, in personal thinking, there's often a lot of judgment or criticism or uh, the good or something's good or bad or right or wrong or, and so on. It's like the, it's the constant dialogue of chatter that, that is often going on. Now what, what that can lead to is a, is a low quality of mind. Where actually, have you ever had um, a big decision to make? Well, of course you've had big decisions, I'm sure, along the way. Or big decisions that you think are big, of course, because um, that's only in your thinking. But you've got a decision to make and you pontificate on it for ages. You go around the houses, you talk to other people, Oh, you know, it, it creates horrible feeling, and so on. And, and this, is, this is critical in business, it's critical anywhere. How do you make good decisions? And how do you uh, make, you know, with a high quality of mind, when you've got that clarity, when the snow globe is not sort of full of impersonal thinking, you can suddenly realise something for yourself and you know what to do. This is more about you, really, than, than other people. It's about you tuning into and, and being in a moment. It's um, in this conversation, you know, the, the room is really quiet, isn't it? And, and it's, it's deeply reflective. And actually, I'm sort of, I, I think, taking you into to this space where a lot of the time you're just sort of being and hanging out and immersing yourself in something. You're not thinking a lot. Uh, I, I don't sense that you are. You're not sat there going... Like in the exercise we did around the drawing, there was some personal thinking going on. Yeah? That would be an example of it. Whereas this is, a, this is sort of a state where you access a higher quality of mind, where things sink in a bit more. You have more realisations, you tend to operate better, you're more in the zone, that sort of thing.
Now, my little man on the side here, there's an indicator of where, where you are on this scale, the quality, of your the quality of mind, as we're calling it here, the quality of your thinking. And often, um, often you can pick up a feeling. Often, often you can pick up a feeling um, that will indicate that your quality of mind is not that great. So if, you know, the, the, the extreme example, if you're angry or you're frustrated about something, then you, you're, you're likely to, to really feel that quite strongly. Now that's suggesting to you that actually you're in a low quality of mind and you're not going to be resourceful, not necessarily come up with the best ideas, uh, not in the best place to have a discussion with someone and so on and so on. My 14-year-old having a reaction to a, you know, friendly little spider would, would be down here, yes. Because there's a strong feeling associated with that. And, and by the way, this is also a positive feeling. You know, when you're overly excited, uh, really passionate, incredibly passionate about something, um, in love with, with someone, um, uh, feeling wonderful feelings, actually... That can be a low quality of mind also, because in that state you cannot make the best decisions either. Yeah? Now, and you sometimes see this um, in, a, in a, a match, you know, a, a rugby game or a, or a football game or something, something like that, and um, it's a really important match. So they come on and they psych themselves up and they go out and you know, actually in, in a rugby game and they give away loads of penalties because they're too, they're too up for it. Yeah? This, this is a, this is a neutral state. This is a neutral state where you're sort of in flow. You are energised but you're not, you know, thwarted by whatever the personal thinking might be. So what, what should we do about this? Well, clearly we want to be up here more, right? But that, that's what I'm suggesting to you is we've tried to do with various techniques for 40 years. How do we get in this situation? Well, we meditate or we do mindfulness or we just think positive or we, and so on. If you try and get to that state, then guess what? It doesn't, doesn't really work. Um, what, I, what, I'm, what I'm suggesting to you is that you have all of this going on. And you, you do have personal... And it actually takes care of itself if you just let it. So if, I, if I'm caught with negative feelings, um, I don't over-process them. I don't think about it. I don't, I don't think about it, try and identify why, try and rectify it, talk to someone else about it, and then they get involved in my story and they agree too, which embellishes the feeling. I don't do the you here. Right? It's a natural part of the system, of the human system, for you to have personal thinking and to have crappy feelings. It's, it's not good or bad. You see, the moment we define it as good or bad is the moment we're, we're on this roller coaster of, of the human journey. Right? Where it tends to go high and then low and high and then low. I'm not saying anything that um, you can't get quotes on all over the place, right? So, um, he here's one for you. Einstein. The intuitive mind is a sacred gift and the rational mind is a faithful servant. I've missed off the word servant there. We have a society that honours the servant and forgets the gift. Faithful servant sacred gift and the sacred gift is inside you right your intuitive mind your natural ability to do something to create something and so on and it's this rational mind that you know I'm, I guess I'm calling personal thinking is getting in the way Pe people have been pointing at this for for hundreds and thousands of years actually what, what I'm saying here is not new it, you'll find it in certain aspects of uh, certain religions 
uh, the wise have been saying this in various forms, people like that. Um, and and that's, that's really what we're pointing out here. It's very difficult when we talk about other people because we don't know, right? Um, and, and you might be right to some extent. All, all I can do is, I, all you can do right now, or I invite you to do, and all I can do is go inside myself and say, what do I know to be true for myself? And, and I, I know it to be true for myself that when I'm uh, in a higher quality of mind, I tend to, gener I tend to be more effective uh, in all aspects, including creation of ideas. So, especially, you know, in teams, um, um, but across companies, you know, I know you've obviously Agenda 21 with client, um, there's a massive part of um, understanding each other well, right? Understanding each other's reality of a problem or a situation, absolutely critical to get into their eyes so that you then have a greater perspective to innovate. Uh, the, the term authentic leadership is quite a topical one at the moment. Authentic leadership, um, you, you may have heard that term. And this, this really links into that. Because what we're largely saying is go inside, right? The answer's inside you and about, about anything is tune into what you think and what you feel and, and from a high quality of mind, live from that place. And when you live from that place, there's power. Pe it resonates. People experience power and they, they experience an authenticity about you. There's a huge element, um, certain, certainly to, to leadership and being in an organisation that, that where, where people come from uh, inside and they are their authentic self and they're not, you know, they're not um, doing the outside world thing. They're trying to be a certain way or they're tiptoeing around a boss because of a certain thing or, you know, um, the, the power gets reduced there. The power is most powerful when you're looking inside for answers and what you think um, uh, uh, rather than externally. What I'm saying is that most of most human beings and, and society misunderstands how the, innocently misunderstands how the mind actually works. And because of that uh, misunderstanding, we end up with all sorts of psychological issues, be it lacking confidence, fearful, stress, uh, uh, and so on. And I'm saying the more that you understand the nature of some of the things that I've talked about here, the more actually what happens is a lot of the problems naturally dis disappear. And as they naturally disappear, like the snow globe, actually we're left more in a space where we're able to be powerful, creative, influential, innovative, and so on. There's one, there's one last distinction, um, really impl implication actually, um, of my first model here, the, the principles as I'm calling them. So psychologically there is only the present moment there is only the present moment there isn't a past and there's not a future psychologically so what do i mean by that is that the only thing that actually exists is this moment now the thought and the feeling and the experience that you're having right now and the only the only way that the past exists is if you think about it now. So whatever you did this morning when you got out of bed, you know, whether you brushed your teeth or whether you had some breakfast or, you know, putting your clothes on or whatever, um, that's gone. But if you, you, you can only recall it in the present moment. Other, other than that, the past doesn't exist. And the future's the same, right? You know you 
book a book a holiday and you look forward to it and it's it's some some point you might be going away for half term or easter or you know you, you thought about your summer holiday or, it doesn't exist the only thing that exists is when you think about it in this moment now now why is that so important to know so think how much of the time we we talk about the past i can't do that because i'm no good at that because i did it last week and it didn't work right immediately that's a thought created construct that then prevents you from just being in the now in a certain way and we look back at you know our childhood and whatever else to sort of justify who we are yeah well this is this is who i am i grew up here and my mum was like this so this is how i am and and psychologically that that doesn't exist it only exists when you access it in in this moment now now it Again, it's not good or bad, it's just noticing that. You see, when I notice that, then I carry less of the past with me, and I'm free to be, you know, I might have existed for many years as not creative, or as not good at presenting, or, or, good, at, or good at something. But all of that's irrelevant, actually. The only thing that is, 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 is this moment now. Why is this important to know about the future? So you're worrying about something next week and, and you may have the experience, what percentage of the time do you think when you're worrying about something that you think might happen, what percentage of the time does it actually happen anyway? I, I don't know what that percentage is. It's certainly not 100% right. It, it's, prob yeah, it's probably, I don't know, single figures or it's low percentage. Most of the time we spend, we spend uh, thinking about the future, that prevents us. I mean, you, you might have even found yourself doing it this morning where you're thinking about a meeting you've got this afternoon or worrying about something you've got this afternoon or tomorrow and so on. And what that does is it prevents the power and you accessing the full human potential of you have in, in any moment. And sometimes we even say, I, I know what's going to happen. I know how he's going to react, right? Okay, so I hope this has been thought-provoking. I hope it's been sort of quality thought-provoking for you. Um, I, I'd, I'd invite you to, to have some time to reflect on it. I'd invite you to not go on straight onto your emails, if, if at all possible, and have some time to reflect on, on this and let it sink in, because it's... You know, it's this sort of conversation tends to sink in somewhere a bit deeper and notice whatever you notice over the next few days. There's not a lot to do other than to notice and become aware. <laughs>